Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a very simple step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the Gemini API with Python and how to use it to build a customized chatbot. The Gemini API is a very powerful large language model and the API is simple to use and easy to integrate into one of your applications. To get started with Gemini, first sign up for an account on Google AI Studio and create an API key. If you haven't done this already, go to ai.google.dev Click Gemini API, click Get API Key, and sign into your Google account. Once you're signed in, you should go right to this page, but if you don't, click Get API Key. I've already created a couple of keys. If you haven't already, click Create API Key here. We'll come back to this and we're going to use the key in order to access Gemini. But first, we're going to take a look at the playground and talk about how to set up the model. Go over here, click Create New Prompt, and click Chat Prompt. This is the Gemini Playground, and this is where you can experiment with different types of prompts and different types of parameters. These are the instructions that you give to customize the chatbot. So you can instruct it to take on a certain persona, like a formal assistant or an expert in a field or a specific character. You can direct its style and tone if you want it to be formal or more humorous as well as a wide range of other things like different types of tasks and goals. What I'm going to do is direct it to act like an expert science teacher. So I'm giving it some instructions here in terms of what its goal is, which is to educate um, children in science in an understandable way using analogies and examples and humor. Um, and there's other directions in here as well. I can test this. I'll just write, type in something simple. I'll just say hello. And we can see here that the model knows its role. It's responding, hi there, future scientists, what's on your mind today? Trying to initiate a conversation um, based on this subject. So next I wanna go over here to the right. I wanna take a look at these parameters. So these are the parameters that you can set for the model. First thing here is actually choosing which model you're gonna use. Uh, Gemini 1.5 Flash, this is the cheapest and fastest model. Gemini 1.5 Pro is the best and most expensive model. So we're gonna select Pro for now. Uh, here's the token count up to 1 million token context window maximum. So that's pretty incredible. That's about 750,000 words. I think it was just back in November of 2022 when we started using ChatGPT, the maximum was 4,000 tokens. So 4,000 to a million in uh, about 18 months, that's pretty incredible. Uh, down here, this is an important parameter, the temperature that you will want to set. This is like a dial for controlling whether or not you want the model to be very predictable and accurate, or if you want it to be more variable and creative. So the general rule of thumb is if you're dealing with outputs that are factual and accuracy is important, you want to set the temperature low. If you're doing more creative content creation work, then you would want to set the temperature high. Down here, these are the safety settings. So these are quite interesting. This is where you can instruct the model on whether or not to censor certain content. So what makes this really interesting is that Gemini is the only one who actually gives users this level of control. OpenAI and Anthropic do not. And then finally, down here in the advanced settings, you can control the output format. So right now, it's just set to plain text, but I can set it to JSON and it'll give us that output in, in JSON format. Okay, excellent. So we want to integrate this into an actual application. So to see how this looks in code, we just go up here, we click get code. And we can see here, we would install the Google Generative AI library. Um, we would set up our configuration, um, such as the temperature, uh, the max output token. So this is the size of the output. Right now it's set to the maximum, which is just about 8,200 tokens. Um, we can see right here that the response is application JSON, the safety settings. Um, just in terms of knowing how to set the parameters and what options you have, a good way of doing that is just setting them in the playground and seeing what the code looks like. Um, so right now I wanna make a few changes. I wanna change the temperature to zero. I wanna change the response type back to plain text. So I could just go up here, temperature to zero, and then I'm going to change the output back to plain text. And when we see how this has changed the code, we can see response type. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to my VS code. 
I'm going to create a file called chat.py and just copy this code into here. The first thing we need to do is install the Google Generative AI library. So before I do that, I'm going to create and activate a virtual environment, which is just good programming practice. And now I can pip install Google Generative AI. Let's take a look at the code. We import a couple of libraries and here is where we load our API key, which we created earlier. So I'm going to go back to my Gemini console, get API key, and then I'm just going to copy the API key that I created. Now I personally like to use a .env file for storing environmental variables like passwords. So I'll create another file .env and I'll save my API key here. To load this, I'm going to have to install another library, Python dot env i'll import the library and then i just have to make a quick change here so os dot get env and that should work to load our api key excellent okay so now taking a look here these are just some of our parameters uh temperature the max tokens, the response type. These were our safety settings. So all of that looks good. And then here is where we create the model with genai.generative model. Uh, we can give it the model name. We provide it with the parameters that we set. And also it has the system instruction where I'm telling it to act like a science teacher for kids and giving it additional instructions. So the chat session actually starts here. Uh, we use model.startChat to create a chat session. And what's important to understand here is that this takes one parameter, and that's an object called history. So history is essentially a record of the conversation. So as we're talking to the chatbot, we want to make sure that it continues to have a memory of what we've said in the past. If we don't constantly update this history and feed it back into the chatbot every time we give it an input or ask it a question, then it's not going to know what it's told us before or information that we've given it. So what's important is that the data structure of this object is exactly like Gemini wants to receive it. So we can see history is a list and the list contains dictionaries and each dictionary is either an input from the user or a response from the model. So the dictionaries have two keys. One is role, either user or model, and the other is parts, which store the information that is sent to the model or received from it. So parts contains a list which contains the text. So every time we send a request, every time we receive a response, we want to update this history. Right now, because we're going to be starting a conversation from scratch, I'm actually just going to erase this. Actually, I'll just take this out completely and I will say history equals history. And then I will initiate the history object just with an empty list. I'm going to create a while loop. So that we can go back and forth in conversation with this chatbot for as long as we want. The first thing is we're going to provide a user input we're going to create our chat session with the history and then we're going to generate a response with chat session dot send message and this takes as an input our user input And in order to get the response in simple text, we use response.text. Uh, we can also get the history from chat session.history, but we're actually building that history ourselves. So I can take this out. I'm going to name this model response. I'm 
print it out. And then finally, we have to update this history. So we're starting with an empty list. Every time we send a message to the chat bot, we want to append that to this history. So history dot append, and that's going to be a dictionary with the key role, in this case, user, and a key parts, which is a list, which sends our question or statement. And I'm also going to want to keep a history of the model's response. So history.append dictionary key role, in this case, model. And then parts, a list, and the model response. This looks pretty good. Maybe I will just start this conversation off with a statement. This will be, hello, how can I help you? So this should work. Let's give this a try. Python chat.py. Bot says, hello, can I help you? I'm just going to say hi. Hi there, future scientist. What's got your curiosity bubbling today? Tell me, have you seen anything cool in the world? I'm just going to say, I'm not sure what to learn. What are your suggestions? And the bot has a few suggestions. Um, we can explore the world of things that float and sink. I could just say, no. What else? And now it's suggesting that we learn about rainbows. So it knows its role. It's having a conversation. We can see that this works, but we could clearly go well beyond this. We could create more complex system instructions. We can integrate it with other functions, other tools. We can give it a really nice user interface. There's a lot we can do, but this is the starting point. And from here, there are really unlimited possibilities. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, please post them. I'm happy to answer any questions. Bye for now.